When you can't make it to City Hall or the school board meetings, local journalists from Duluth News Tribune will be there to report the facts and get your questions answered. Local news works for you. Stay up to date at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Hello, Northlanders. It's Wednesday, June 21st. I'm White Buckner, the Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. A police officer who was acquitted of felony charges after shooting an unarmed man through a door of a downtown apartment has been reinstated to his job. Tyler Liebfried, quote, is currently in an active employment status with the Duluth Police Department, end quote. Spokeswoman Maddie Jelseth confirmed to the News Tribune on Tuesday. Jelseth did not answer questions regarding the date Liebfried, 31, returned to work, his current job duties, or the process by which he was allowed to return. Representatives of the Duluth Police Union did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Police administrators previously announced that they found Liebfried had violated the permit use of force policy in the September 12, 2020 shooting of Jared File and said he would remain, quote, off duty indefinitely, end quote. While never confirmed by the city, records indicate the department sought to fire him shortly after he was charged. Liebfried, however, was found not guilty of second-degree assault and intentional discharge of a firearm by a St. Louis County jury in April 2022 in what was believed the first time an aerial law enforcement officer stood trial for an on-duty shooting. Liebfried shot file after responding to a possible domestic disturbance at the Kingsley Heights Apartments at 105 West 1st Street. He and a fellow officer determined there was no cause for an arrest, but headed up to File's third floor unit to help retrieve some of his girlfriend's belongings. Liebfried and fellow officer Corey Lynn's home later told Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension investigators that they heard two gunshot-like noises, which were later determined to have likely been from file force when the door closed with a hatchet. Body camera video showed Liebfried drawing his duty pistol and ducking into a small alcove while Lynn's home retreated down the hallway and around a corner. Liebfried, who could be heard yelling, shots fired over the radio, waited approximately 10 seconds before firing an initial volley of four shots into the door. After waiting six seconds, then fired an additional two rounds into the door as further screams were heard from File and others in the building. File, then 23, was treated at a local hospital for his injuries, but it was determined that a bullet in the shoulder could not be safely removed. The officers had not yet announced their presence when the banging noises were heard. Andrew Poole, a Duluth attorney representing File, has not publicly ruled out a civil lawsuit. He did not immediately respond to request Tuesday. A bus driver has been cited for an iron range crash that hospitalized a teacher and left two students with minor injuries. Bonnie Joanne Locken, 71, of Hoyt Lakes, has been summoned to appear in court July 21st on a misdemeanor account of failing to stop at a stop sign. Locken was filling in as a substitute driver for Masabi East Schools in Aurora on March 23rd when the bus, carrying a dozen students, attempted to cross an intersection in the Palo area and was T-boned by a pickup truck, according to police reports. The other driver, Theodore Fredrickson, coincidentally, was a fifth grade teacher also headed to the school. Authorities said he was airlifted to a Duluth hospital and treated for a number of injuries, including fractures to his back and leg. The collision occurred just before 7.30 a.m. at the intersection of County Road 100 and Palo Road 41 in White Township, approximately 10 miles south of Aurora School. Multiple 911 calls were placed by students aboard the bus, which went off the road and crashed into some trees before coming to rest. St. Louis County Sheriff's deputies arrived to find Locken aboard the bus near the rear emergency exit, with students walking to safety at a nearby church. But Fredrickson, 53 of Mackinac, was trapped in his 2016 Chevrolet Silverado and indicated his legs were going numb. Arrangements were made for him to be flown to Essential Health St. Mary's Medical Center in Duluth. Locken had a deep laceration on her nose. The driver was transported to Essential Health Northern Pine in Aurora, as was one girl who sustained a leg injury. The student's brother was also later evaluated for back soreness. Locken agreed to have her phone searched by investigators, who found no indication that it was in use at the time. A black box was recovered from the bus, but its manufacturer determined the hard drive was outdated and had not recorded any video since 2018. Fredrickson later told investigators he sustained a compound fracture to his left femur, a fractured lower vertebra, a dislocated toe, chest bruising, and a laceration that required a half dozen stitches. Locken does not have any apparent criminal or traffic history. 
A four-year-old boy died at Fairview Range Hospital after he was involved in an ATV rollover at a gravel pit located between the Hill Rust Mine View and Masabi Bike Trail. Hibbing police responded to a report of the crash at about 4.15 p.m. Saturday. Jesse Allen Feltis, 28, was operating an ATV with two child passengers on board when the vehicle flipped, according to a news release from the Hibbing Police Department. A four-year-old boy was transported to the hospital, where he later was pronounced dead. Feltus and another seven-year-old boy sustained non-life-threatening injuries as a result of the crash, police reported. All the parties were wearing helmets. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought from the News Tribune's Best of the Best Awards. Forecast for the greater Duluth Harbor area for today, a beautiful sunny summer day with temperatures reaching right around 80 degrees. It'll be a little warmer in northern Wisconsin. Southeast winds around 5 to 10. Mostly clear tonight with a low in the upper 50s. Tomorrow, some increase in clouds and a slight chance of a shower or thunder shower by evening, but the day will be mostly sunny and warm with temperatures reaching into the mid-80s around Duluth and approaching 90 in parts of southern Wisconsin. Widely scattered showers and thunderstorms Thursday night and Friday. Friday's high near 80 degrees. The chance of unsettled weather will continue this weekend. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to the Best of the Best Awards for their support. The contest is an annual celebration of the best the Northland has to offer when it comes to businesses and organizations that make the Northland a better place to live. Nominations are accepted until July 14th as the first part of the competition. Voting will take place August 7th to August 21st. Nominate your favorites today at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Reporting for today's episode was done by Tom Olson and Peter Passy. Thank you for listening to Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.